Mom. Mom. Mommy. Oh, Dari. That dream again. Nothing to worry about. I'll be fine. Mom, you have to talk to me. I'm worried for you. You can't go on like this. It's getting worse daily. I'm going to be fine. You know, I've been seeing a psychotherapist. In fact, I'm going to the clinic tomorrow to keep my next appointment with him. I know. The man is doing a wonderful job. But you've been seeing him for months now without any tangible improvements. Mom, Dara and I have been praying to Jesus to help you. Why don't you join hands with us? Return to Jesus. Let him bear this burden for you. Jesus? <laughs> Dari, leave Jesus out of this. I can handle it myself. I'll be alright. Trust me. Hello, sir. Yes, sir, Dari. I'm fine, sir. That's why I'm calling, sir. My mom is not getting any better. She keeps having that nightmare. No, sir. She has not been eating well and she hardly talks to us in the house. She prefers to sit alone and murmur to herself all day. Sir? Yes, sir. Oh, oh. thank you, sir. Okay, sir, I won't. Bye, sir. Tomorrow is my next appointment with you. Why are you here? Dari did not call you again. Did he? He did. I was just leaving the clinic when his call came in. So I decided to stop by briefly. I told him not to tell you. This boy. Madam, your son really loves you and he wants the best for you. What does he want again? I told him I'm okay. All I need is a little more time to sort myself out. Besides, I've been taking the drugs you prescribed for me. I feel great. I feel better. I'm okay. But your son feels otherwise. I've been in contact with him. He's been giving me regular updates on your condition. Why won't you people let me be? You seem to be all over me. I already told you I'm fine. Hmm. I remember when Daria accompanied you to the clinic on your first visit. He told me you were not like this before that ugly incident. He said you are a vibrant, happy-go-lucky woman that was so full of life and energy. Now, as an experienced psychotherapist, by now I expect your prognosis to be better than this. Excuse me, doctor. I'm okay. I hone my body. I know how I feel within myself. Hmm, I understand. I understand how you feel. I really do. You see, there they go again. Everybody recites the same poem. I understand how you feel. How on earth can you understand how I feel when you're not going through what I'm going through? No, doctor. You don't understand how I feel. You don't understand what it means to lose a loved one. My late husband was the most loving, caring, and peaceful man I've ever seen. He loved God without any reservation. He dedicated his life and property to the things of God. Now, look at how God chose to repay him. He allowed him to die in an accident just like that. You now sit here and tell me you understand. No, you don't. You don't. Well, <laughs> now I agree. I don't. But God does. He understands how you feel and He cares for you. He cares. <laughs> he cares. 
Yet he opened his eyes and allowed this evil to befall me. He allowed my glowing sun to set at midday. He allowed my song of celebration to turn into a song of lamentation. Hmm. He really cares. Hmm. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. Oh, you want to try the Bible weapon? Good attempt, but sorry, it cannot work. I can quote many promises from the Bible. I've come to realize that they are nothing more than mere promises. Well, I've come to know that religion is not worth the waste of time. Hmm. Hmm. Please, allow me to tell you the story of a man. The man was so devoted to the work of God. He was married to a beautiful Christian lady. Both of them were on fire for God. Their marriage was blessed with three children, a set of twin girls and a boy. The family had virtually everything going for them. Then it happened. One fateful day, like a flash of lightning out of the skies, the man lost his wife and his three children in an accident in one day. This devoted child of God was disappointed. He was devastated. Who won't be? Who will not be devastated after a calamity? Hmm. Yeah. Terrible rumors were peddled about the man. Some said he was paying for his sins. Others said he sacrificed his family in exchange for wealth. Oh, so I'm not alone in this. What did people not say about me? <laughs> Some members of my late husband's family even said I killed him so as to inherit his property. The man I'm talking about was in despair. He felt helpless. His world seemed to be crashing down. But in all this, one thing he never did was to lose his trust in God. Yes, there were times he got angry with God. There were times his faith wavered, but he held onto hope in God. In the end, his fire for God was reignited. His joy of salvation was restored. He got back on his feet. Hmm. What a nice story with a happy ending. That's the stuff good fictions are made of, you know. Happy ever after. Doctor, my own case is not a fiction. It is a stark reality of hopelessness and helplessness. Hmm. Well, the story I just told you is not a fiction. I'm sure it will interest you to know that it is the story of my life. The man in the story is me. No. Yes. Do you remember the Air Stallion plane crash that occurred last year? The one in which 254 people lost their lives. Right. My wife and three children were on that flight. You mean? I lost the four of them. They were actually returning from New York, where they went to spend a vacation with my aunt. I was at the airport to receive them. I, along with other people, waited for our loved ones. Minutes rolled into long hours of anxiety and uncertainty. Hmm. At exactly 8.24 p.m. on that fateful day, news eventually broke that their plane had crashed and everyone on board died. I can't believe this. But well, here you are, always lively and ever joyful. I've never seen you without a smile on your face. Well, just like anyone would be, I was shattered. I was devastated. I was seriously heartbroken. It was as if my heart paused 
for a long moment. I thought the world had ended because nothing mattered to me again. I felt as if I was covered in a thick blanket of gloom. I felt myself groping in a palpable darkness of loneliness. The experience was horrible to worsen matters. I couldn't even retrieve the corpses of my wife and kids to give them a befitting burial because all the victims were born beyond recognition. They were all given a mass burial at the site of the plane crash. Hmm. Honestly, I thought I would never get out of it, but I did. How? <laughs> Excuse me. Let me get something from the car. What is this for? Today marks the first anniversary of the plane crash that introduced an unexpected and undesired twist into the story of my life. I woke up this morning with mixed emotions. The devil wanted to pull me down into the valley of sorrow, but I chose to climb up the mountain of joy. It was a choice I chose to make. Before leaving home for the office, I sang and danced unto God to thank him for his goodness, faithfulness, and kindness. You can still sing and dance? How? <laughs> his grace is more than sufficient. I bought this bottle of non-alcoholic wine after I closed from work today. My plan was to take it home and pop it to the glory of my God and to the shame of the devil, whose plan was to discourage and disorient me. However, I can see God has another use for it. Look at this. Imagine this bottle contains every negative emotion you can think of. Pain, grief, frustration, depression, discouragement, resentment, anger, what have you. The content remains bottled up within because the bottle is sealed and corked. I'm sure you will agree with me that there are only two possible ways to release the content. One, you can break the bottle and allow the content to pour out of it. If you do this, you will lose the bottle and it will be of no future use. Two, you can remove the cork and let go of the content. This was what I did. With the help of the Holy Spirit, I uncorked my life and let go of all bottled up negative emotions. I poured out all my pains and frustrations at the feet of my Lord Jesus Christ. I cried out in prayers to the only one who truly understands how I feel. In the end, the Holy Spirit descended upon my weary soul and filled me up with peace reassurance and fresh strength to go on. That was it. Mommy Dari, the only person who can heal wounded hearts is Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can mend broken hearts. He is ever ready to bear us up in his arms and use his nail-pierced palms to wipe off our tears. Jesus is loving and caring. Jesus is willing and ready. The question is, will you uncock your cocked life and release your burdens to him? Please do and allow him to fill you up with peace, joy, and an assurance of hope. Hmm? Please. 
my Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Help me, Lord. I release all to you. I release all to you. I release all to you. Help me, Lord. I release all to you. I release all to you. Mom? Where are you going? Church. I'm going for the virtuous women's fellowship. As a matter of fact, I'm resuming my God-given assignment as a coordinator of a fellowship. You know what? Satan has lost the battle. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. Oh, it is a miracle, my God. Mom. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 